Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, uh, what I'm going to do is just light my uh, uh, offset smoker, get it going, and prepare it to make some ribs. However, I wanted to spend a little extra time today on what it takes just to set up this grill and get it get the fire going and to manage the temperature that you want to have. Um, what I do every time is I, I thoroughly clean this grill every time and make sure it's, it's good and I even wash the mats and everything else. So what I normally do is I start with bringing out my uh, Maverick ET372 uh, and uh, getting that set up and ready to go. I put down either what they call a frog mat or a Q mat, lay that down to place my food product on it. I make sure that my uh, element to, uh, or probe is out there where it can collect the temperature of the grill. I also make sure I have a pan of water in here because the fire does get hot next to the, uh, uh, the, the firebox, which is right over here, and it will send then maybe a little bit moisture into the air as the fire is being made. So one of the ma major important things that I have is, is make sure your, your firebox in an offset or the area that you're going to burn your, your uh, smoke fire uh, is clean. I do this every time at the conclusion is what I do is I get this thing so that it is completely clean and that way I can uh, uh, make sure that the airflow is good from underneath. So clean it out every time. It's really worthwhile. Now, the next thing is charcoal. I normally use royal oak charcoal because it's a lump charcoal. It's a hardwood lump charcoal made out of oak. And I use this primarily uh, as the base of the, uh, uh, of the fire starting. Okay, so a lot of people just use lump charcoal all the time. Secondly, I use brick charcoal. You don't have to, you can use all lump. Or if you choose, you can use briquette charcoal as your pleasure. Now I happen to buy this outdoor gourmet charcoal on sale at Academy Sports and this charcoal was like three dollars a bag. It was really inexpensive and it does a nice job. I've used it about four times already. Um, I also picked up uh, yesterday this uh, little box uh, from Weber. It has these little cubes in it that you can use to start your fire either with match or some other source. What I do, and I think it's a real good investment if you're going to be a wood smoker, is to buy yourself a torch and use a torch to light it up. Now this is the Benzomatic uh, TS8000. It has an automatic start and automatic shut off for me that I can use, which is fingertip operated, and I find this indispensable in starting the fires. So today I'm going to load up the briquettes and the uh, lump and I'm going to start a fire and that's the whole purpose of this particular video. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, I'm going to be right around in a second. I just don't walk real good anymore. Get there. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nice layer of lump charcoal in. enough with this bag. The next thing <clears throat> I'm going to do is put in some of the uh, briquettes because the briquette will give you a longer running fire. That way <clears throat> we will uh, uh, get a better burn. That's really stay hotter for a longer time. In the meantime I'm going to try to install these um, little uh, white cubes. I put a few of them around. As you can see there's just little white cubes. You can place them in here at random and you know, you've got yourself something good going here. Maybe you'll accelerate the fire. <coughs> and uh, do that. And now I'm going to place uh, some of these pets in here as well. Okay. 
All right, so I've got maquettes. I've got this. I've got lump. Now, you can start this fire with newspapers if you want. There's no problem with that. You don't need anything else more sophisticated. But um, it seems to me that this is a little quicker and gets it started better. And I think that uh, you get a nice, hot, even fire this way. Okay, this will go. So what we're going to do is we're I'm just going to leave the lid open. I'm going to leave the door open and for about 20 or so minutes, usually to get these all white where they're going and getting nice and warm. And then I'm going to start trying to get the smallest pieces of wood I can on top of these briquettes. I'm going to flatten them down and spread them out a little bit. And they will do that all by themselves. But in this instance, this is really what it takes to get this thing going, and I give it a full air supply at this point. Okay, I'm gonna break for now. Okay, it's 30 minutes since I've been here, and the coals on the bottom are really taking off really well. I've got flames still coming off of the fire, it's that hot. And this is when I usually take very small pieces of wood, and I just kind of, tossed them over here and when after a while they will heat up and when the wood heats up and gets it all of a sudden it will snap into flame and this way it goes. I still kind of leave the door open but I can tell you right now the um, uh, even the fire pit with the door wide open over here my Maverick says that the at the far end of the pit it's 127 degrees I don't know if you can get a handle on that from here but uh, uh, there it is and it's time to close the door to the pit. Okay, and uh, you can tell from here, okay, uh, this needle is starting to move. Uh, it also is showing about 125 degrees up here from the heat level going near the chimney. I was a foolish boy, I forgot to open up my vent over here, but now it's open. And you got to remember that too, so don't forget, based on my little error, you need to do that for I I usually recognize it before it's too late. And uh, so I got this going. The coals are turning white on the bottom. They're moving up slowly, like a minion method, if you will. But in another 15 minutes, this whole thing will be ablaze. And I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to just leave the door open, a slight edge like this. And I'm going to close the top lid now. And I'm just going to let it ferment. <laughs> if you will, bad word, but that's what it's going to go on and the heat will continue to rise inside the machine. So again, we have the door slightly ajar, the heat will build up and the coals will eventually all take over. And then I will start putting on the wood that I have located down here. Okay, see you later. Okay, I, uh, those two little logs got hot enough that I took one of the big ones and I shoved it on. And now I'm hoping that this will burn down and create a nice, hot, steady bed of coals in order to feed the fire. And I see the fire is already at 142. This is going to go for another 15 minutes, probably. As soon as it hits 200 degrees, I'm going to shut the dampers on the side over here. Let me see if I can get around. I'm, on a, I'm not doing too good on the feet, so 
Um, here we are. So what, what I will do is kick this just like that. And when it hits 200, 215, something, if I come out here and look and whatever it is, over 200, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I will have this closed. And uh, right now, as you can see, um, these, this, these pieces of wood, as I explained uh, before, are uh, very, very dry. I pick them up for $9.95 a bag for one and a half cubic feet. And uh, it's smoking really good now, so I'm going to close the lid and uh, let this thing go. Okay, we'll catch you in a while. Okay, I hope you can see it. There's a nice light smoke coming out of the uh, chimney here. Uh, the temperature is now just moved across 200. I've got the door slightly ajar. Almost fell over. <laughs> that would have been a good scene. Crash. Um, and it's time to put the ribs on, which I will do right now. All right, we've got this uh, fire going good. Ribs are on. I'm going to close this down. I'm going to shut the, I'm going to shut off this door, which is pretty hot, and I should have put a glove on. I'm going to move this halfway. That should do it. And uh, we're in business. Nice smoke. Okay. See you later. Okay, it's 10 minutes later. Um, as you can see, I'm approaching 225, and this is exactly where I want to be, and I want to be this way for the next five and a half hours. And uh, that's the way it's cooking. I got the smoke where I want it, and uh, it's doing very nicely. So, unlike a pellet smoker or um, one of the other smokers, this requires a lot more attention than uh, a pellet smoker, obviously, and because uh, you're constantly monitoring, monitoring airflow, and I always check and look out to see what color the smoke is. The smoke uh, color will give you a good indication of whether or not you're at the temperature you want to be at. Okay, we'll catch you later. Okay, there's a break in the Florida-Miami game, and so I decided to come out and take a look. I got a nice steady stream of smoke, as you can see. The temperature looks like it's around 225. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. And uh, just want to show you something though. It, uh, the, uh, the Maverick says 199. This says 225. So they're never, never equal. But what, what happens is, is I interpolate. So if there's a 25 degree difference and I'm sitting in my house between the Maverick and the uh, thermometer on the, on the uh, smoker. I always look at the Maverick in the house and then, and then I just add 25 or 30 degrees to it and then I can figure out where the smoker really is. So if I see the Maverick go up any further, I know that I've got to shut the uh, wind down to the, uh, the airflow down to the, to the fire so that I can lower the temperature. All right, catch you later. Okay. As you can see, I have removed the ribs. I have, this is all that's left. The way I do this is I time it so it will go down and burn itself into ash um, by the end of the cook. If it was a 10 hour cook, I would have kept going until the last two hours. But what I've maintained is a steady 225 degree temperature. And this is the last of all the wood. So I used maybe um, six small pieces of wood through the entire uh, uh, cooking process. And I have not used any additional charcoal whatsoever. So the first charcoal that I applied was it. As you can see, it's almost all burned down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this now go out so that tomorrow morning, uh, I am going to clean this whole thing out and toss the ashes in a safe can. Okay, uh, that's the end of this cook. I may come back with an epilogue just to show you the ribs, but uh, that's the whole purpose of this was managing the fire and starting the fire and getting it all through a uh, uh, the process. Okay.